Hello everyone, I'm Debbie with Watercolors That Glow. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the importance of watercolor paper as the foundation of a great painting. I see so many people give up watercolor painting out of frustration because they start out with cheap inferior paper. I'm going to show you why good paper can make the difference between a great painting or a watercolor you tear up in frustration because of cheap paper. At the end of this tutorial, you will have a better understanding of the importance of good watercolor paper. So join me and let's get started. All right, so let's talk about watercolor paper. We're gonna go over really bad cheap watercolor paper first. Again, I'm always surprised at how many people want to start off painting in watercolors and they buy cheap paper and then they get really frustrated because their paper's buckling and the colors aren't sinking in and it just ends up turning into a mess so people usually tear it up and say watercolor's too hard. Well, it's not that watercolor's too hard, it's that you're using the wrong paper. Cheap watercolor paper is made from wood pulp. It's not archival. It, the paint sits on the surface, it doesn't sink in, it gets blotchy, and as soon as we talk about the different watercolor papers, I'm going to show you an example of why you don't want to use the cheap paper. Okay, so enough about the cheap paper for now. Now let's talk about good watercolor paper, professional watercolor paper. The brand I use, and I've been using this for years, is Arsha's Watercolor Paper. There are some other brands. Uh, Fabriano is one of them. Twin Rocker from England is another brand. So there are a few of them out there, but I'm just going to talk about what I know really well, and that's the Arsha's brand watercolor paper. Now, the interesting thing about watercolor paper is it comes in different weights. You can get watercolor paper all the way down to 90 pound, then 140 pound, and then 300 pound watercolor paper. So this piece of paper right here is an Arsha's watercolor paper, and it's 140 pound, and you can see that it bends very easily. This sheet right here is an Arsha's watercolor paper, and it's 300 pound, and you can tell that it's a lot stiffer, and it's just, it's just very firm, and the reason why that's important is because when you go to lay water and paint on 140 pound paper, if it isn't prepared correctly, you are going to get major buckling, not just with the cheap brand of watercolor paper, but also with the good brands. So what do you do to stop the paper from buckling if you want to paint on the 140 pound? Well, you have to prep your paper. You have to soak it in either a bathtub or a sink. You have to wait for a while. Then you have to drain the water off. You have to lay it on a board, and then you have to staple it all the way around the edge, tape it down, and then wait. And usually it takes a good day or so for the paper to finally start to shrink up and dry. To me, that's an awful lot of work to uh, get started on a watercolor painting, especially if I don't know if that watercolor painting is gonna work. And if it doesn't, you either have to have other boards prepared and ready to go, or you have to stretch another piece of paper. Now a solution to that is these watercolor blocks. And all of the good brands make them. This is 140 pound, and what, what they do is they take the watercolor paper and they glue a block of sheets, this is about 20, and they glue them together. And then there's a little opening on the top where you can stick a, a knife in there or a palette knife. And after you're done painting, you only take it off the board, the block, after you're done painting. You just zip it around the edge and you pull your painting off and there you go. Then your block is ready to go again for the next painting. So if you do want to paint with 140 pound, I would really suggest you get the watercolor blocks. Much easier to use than trying to stretch your paper. What I paint on 
is exclusively this 300 pound watercolor paper. All I have to do is run a little tube of tape along the back side, flip it over, tape it down, and then put some tape around the edge, and it stays perfectly smooth and flat the whole time that I'm painting, no matter how much water I put on it. So that's what I paint with. It is a little bit more expensive than the 140 pound paper, but I feel like I save money in the long run by not throwing away a lot of watercolor paintings that just don't work. So now let's talk a little bit about surface texture. This one sheet that I have over here, the, uh, the one of the really bad paper, happens to be a hot press surface. And it's just like it sounds, almost like an iron going over the top of the paper. It's very smooth. And even within the good brands, it's very hard to control watercolor on a really smooth surface. So I never recommend to anybody, any first time student, to start off with hot brush paper, unless you want a very loose painterly style. The next surface, and this is the one that I use, is, is it's like the Goldilocks of paper to me. It's cold press paper, and I'm not sure how well you can see this, but it has a little bit of a tooth on it. It's not, not real heavy, just a little bit, just enough to help your watercolor flow across the paper and stay even and sink down into the paper. So I paint on cold press. And you can kind of, I don't know how well you can see the difference, but on this 140 pound versus this 300 pound, the 300 pound paper has a little bit more tooth than the 140 pound paper. And then here's an example where I've painted some um, little swatches on it. But this is rough paper. It's a lot rougher than the cold press paper. And you can kind of see along the edges. It's very hard to do fine details on rough paper. But it looks really great if you're doing a lot of outdoor woodland scenes, mountain scenes. Um, it just has a really rough texture. I rarely use rough paper. So again, I stick with the 300 pound Arches Cold Press Bright White Watercolor Paper. So now let me show you what paint looks like on all these different papers. So here we've got a really cheap watercolor paper. And this is the 140 pound and it buckled as I was painting. And if you look at the, the um, the paint that I've laid down on here, the colors didn't blend, they're blotchy, they sat on the surface of the paper, they didn't sink in nicely, and it just kind of looks dull and blotchy and a mess. There's nothing smooth going on there at all. This is the Arches 140 pound, 100% cotton, bright white, cold press paper. And you can see how much better that looks, even though it buckled a little bit because I didn't have it prepped. You can see that the washes are a lot smoother and they've just blended out really nicely. And I think the colors look a little bit better. Now let's compare this 140 pound to this Arches 300 pound. And hopefully I mentioned that the difference between the cheap paper and the better paper is that the better paper is 100% cotton. The cheap paper is wood pulp. And that is what makes the difference when you put the paint on the paper. So if you look at the difference between the 140 pound and the 300 pound, you can see that the yellow is really vibrant and so is the red. And as it goes down into the purple and blue, you can see that it stayed it stayed where it is, but yet it spread and blended really nicely. Whereas on this 140 pound, it all kind of seemed to group in the middle. And the blue isn't as vibrant right here because it's all right here. Whereas on the 300 pound, it all stayed where it should and just gave some beautiful, nice blends. And I also want to point out too that I didn't switch my paint. I made sure that my paint i mixed plenty of puddles to not only paint on the 140 pound, but also on the 300 pound. But that's what happened 
when I laid the colors down. So this is why I like this Arches 300 pound paper. But again, as long as you buy the quality, good professional watercolor paper, pick the, brand, the brand that you like. Some of the brands have different, you know, different basic textures on them, but you know, you can get sample packs and just practice on them and see what paint surface you like the best. So that's my basic uh, talk about watercolor papers. And again, please don't paint with cheap paper. You're gonna have nothing but frustration and anger and you're gonna rip up a lot of painting. And I don't see how in the long run that is ever going to be economical when you're first trying to learn and you want to start practicing right away on getting your washes and your colors down smoothly, it's, it's impossible to do it on this cheap paper. So unless you really like being frustrated and like tearing up a lot of paintings, stick with the professional brands of watercolor paper. Now, I hope too that you watch my other tutorials because I have one that's on preparing your paper and getting it ready to transfer your image. And then I also have ones on laying down color on paper. So hopefully this cleared up some, some confusion for you about paper and check out my other tutorials. So thank you for watching.